probability distribution. The normal probability dis distribution is what we use to model certain things in the, in the industry. And we have a normal one and we have a standard normal. So I gave you a sheet that had the properties of a normal, properties of a standard one. So if we can just go through this one real easy. It helps if you draw the curve. Everything is in the middle. This is your mean. This is also your median and your mode. Because it's an, a symmetrical curve. It's evenly distributed. Your normal curve is bell-shaped, which it is, and symmetric about the mean as the ticket is folded in half. It is the same on the left as on the right. Same percentage away here as is here. Negative one and positive one. They're each like 30... Uh, 34.2% on each side. It's symmetrical. The total area, the total percent underneath is 100. So the total area under your curve is equal to 1. Okay? And remember we used your table, your table 4, to determine these what they were. The normal curve approaches but never touches the x-axis. These lines down here, that's why they show them going like this. They never, never, never touch the x-axis. We can go as far out as a z-score of 100. We will find something. It will be so minimal that it probably doesn't read anywhere in your chart, but we can find it. It's, it's there. Between plus and minus 1, these are called inflection points. This point right here, if this is plus and minus 1, is an inflection point. An inflection point is somewhere where the curve changes. Where it used to go down, it's easier to see like this. If I, if I run this, this tells me I'm going, I'm curving down. But then all of a sudden I decide, well, I must be going up. Somewhere right in the middle here is called an inflection point. It's where the curve changes. The curve kind of flattens out toward the inflection point. Is it important? Just remember at the plus or minus one. Now, I would like you to write these properties onto your sheet. Okay? Everybody have them there? This is your normal curve, your normal distribution. Remember we looked at some curves that were skewed, skewed to the right, skewed to the left? We can't do z-scores off of any skewed curves. We can only do your z-scores off of a normal curve. So from here on in, we test to see, is it a normal curve? If it is not, we don't run your z-scores off of it. It has to be a normal curve to do this. So for us, from here on in, like I had said to you, we'll work very little bit with the skewed curve just to see where the mean is pulling or where the information is going or where the tail was, where the probability was. Does anybody remember what the probability is when it's a normal curve? When we test it, 25. It's the one half. Very good. It's the one half. So that's what gives us the normal curve. Okay? Now, we take a look at these normal curves. We say, which normal curve has the greater standard deviation? What does standard deviation mean? What does it actually mean, standard deviation? How much something deviates away from the mean. Very good. How much something deviates away from the mean? So what would that mean? If my curve is more spread out, would my standard deviation be greater or less than a curve that is more narrow? Greater. Why? There's more differences. It's going further from the mean. It's deviating further from the mean. So a curve that is more spread out is going to have a larger standard deviation than a curve that's closer together. So therefore, which curve would have a larger standard deviation, A or B? B. B. Now, sometimes you see the, this. You see a curve. It'll go like this. And then it'll go like this. And they have the same exact mean when they put them one on top of the other. You can kind of see this one deviates a little less 
from the meat than the big curve does. See the difference? The larger curve, the wider curve, deviates further from the mean. It has a bigger standard deviation. The smaller the standard deviation, the closer to the mean. Make sense? So if we're looking to see where our data is distributed, we look to see the curve and the standard deviation. The standard deviation goes off of the mean. Remember that. So, let's take a look at this guy. Which normal curve has the largest standard deviation? A, B, or C? C. Which one has the smallest standard deviation? A. And B would come somewhere in between. The, the narrower, the closer to the mean. The smaller the standard deviation. Good? That, that's one concept you have to let sink in. Because that's going to help you understand your standard deviations a little bit more. The word deviation. Deviate. How, how far away it goes. See how, how it goes off the mean. So remember the, the, by the um, definition. Okay. Example two. Let's see where we're at. Some of what you already know. And some of it you kind of did already. When we get to the standard normal, that's what we're, we're more interested in. Okay. The heights of fully grown trees are normally distributed. Your, your problem normally has to tell you this, that they're normally distributed. Otherwise, you cannot apply any of the concepts to your problem. It has to tell you normally distributed. You probably remember this from your Algebra 2 region, or from doing this in Algebra 2. A lot of the kids always say, what does this mean, normally distributed? We really don't kind of go into your curve that much in Algebra 2. We go into your curve a lot more in statistics when we do this. And it kind of makes a little bit more sense to you, hopefully, now. I, I did notice, and I have to say this, on the region, the problem with the probability, a lot of you guys that have statistics now use the table. And that was good. You all got, most of you got, if you use the table, you got that probability question right. I noticed a lot of you guys did it. In fact, um, someone called, what's that? oh, I know who it was, Vincent. Vincent Salgado called and the math office when he was taking the region to see if he could use something that they learned in statistics. And the math teacher, whoever answered the phone, said, yes, they could. So I thought that was very good. You, you have a better understanding. I tried to teach that in Algebra 2, but there's not a real good understanding about the normal curve and what's going on, so it doesn't work as well. So we have a normal curve. The mean is here. This is your mean, your median, your mode. This is the standard deviation of zero. Anything that goes greater than your mean goes this way, to the positive. Anything that goes less than the mean will go this way, to your negatives. Okay, so now, if you take a look at that, and it says um, in your book, estimate the standard deviation. It goes in the middle here to 90. Then it goes from 80 to 100. How would I be able to estimate the standard deviation? Think about it for a second. How many standard deviations are between here and here? Ten. No, no, no. Oh, three. Three. How many points are between here and here? Ten. ten. So ten points have to span three standard deviations. 3. So therefore, about 3.3. 3. 10 divided by 3. It's 3 and a third, or about 3.3. .3. They estimate it to be about 3.5 because they probably go a little bit more than, than this guy right here. They probably are a little bit over. <coughs> so if you're going to estimate a standard deviation, look at the middle, look at the mean, look at the zero, look at the highest one. That's going to span approximately 3. Okay? Just so that you kind of get a, a little feel for this. All right, look at, try it yourself, number two, in your book. See if you can estimate what that standard deviation is. And for some odd reason, my 
graph didn't print out here. You kind of have to look for it because see how these go out like this? You kind of have to decide about where it falls. Look for about when it gets close to the bottom, probably these numbers. Remember this, this keeps on going and never touches that x axis. How would I find approximately how much a standard deviation is here? One standard deviation. What do you think, Dennis? Almost. What do I have to find first? The difference here first. So find the difference. And then divide it by 3. So my standard deviation is about 0.2. It is about 2 tenths. Figure out how much space you have from here to here. And divide it by 3. Can I figure out from here to here and divide it by 6? Would that work? Mm -hmm. yeah, that, 3.5. 3.5 is the middle. You could do 2.9 from 4.1 and then divide it by 6. Because there's 6 standard deviations in between. Okay? <coughs> so just so you kind of get a feel for your normal curve here. Um, here's your standard normal curve. Now, this is what, what we work with. This is what, what we do. You know when I say 0, 1, 2, 3? That's your standard normal. It has all the properties of your normal curve, plus a couple more. And they kind of came right here. So you know the shape that I gave you for your standard normal curve? If you kindly put these on there. What this tells you is this. Here's my zero. Here's my one, two, three. What we can probably measure to, and what measures about your chart is here, to here. Our chart approximately goes from negative 3.49 to positive 3.49. It still goes on and on after that, but the difference is negligible. So and when if you remember looking at table 4, 3.49 is the highest point, negative 3.49 is the lowest point. Anything after that we can probably estimate on the left to be a bit 0, to the left of this to be about 100. Your total area is still 1. It still has all the attributes of your normal curve. We just made it special. Because now we said, as we go from left to right, as your z scores increase, so does your area. Doesn't that make sense? Here's my area. I go a little further. My area grew. I go a little further. My area grew. That's how you find your percentile from the left to the right. My cumulative area for a z-score of zero, how much of my graph have I gone through when I hit a z-score of zero? Half. So therefore my area would be 50%. 0.5. Right? Make sense? If I go through half my curve, 0.5. What's your total area add, add up to? One. So half of that, 0.5. In terms of percent, my total percent is 100%. What's half of 100%? 50%. So if I go through half my curve, I'm at 50%. And my z square, my total area will be close to 100 or close 100% or 1 as I hit 3.49. That's going to be my other endpoint that's significant. Anything after that? is not that significant, it's still going to still say, well, you've already covered about 100% of your curve. Okay? Make sense? Does this, any of this sound familiar from when we did your z-score formulas right before we started your probability? We did these. Remember doing this? Yes. I have a curve. Here's the mean. The mean is 80. My standard deviation is 5. So, I could do this. 
one standard deviation. So this is 85, 90, 95. Remember doing this? We said, what if it's 1.1? What if my score fell in here? I used, what if my score was, in fact, 87? Remember putting it in here? 87 minus my mean over my standard deviation. Are we doing that? Yeah. It'll come back to you. All right. But today, I want you to kind of just grasp the fact that we have a normal curve. All of these attributes are from your normal curve. Everything has to exist first. This has to be a symmetric curve. The area underneath has to be 1 or 100%. All of these things have to happen. And to be a standard normal curve, we put your values on there. That's, that's all that means is we now put your values out there. The zero in the middle, positive 3.49 to negative 3.49. Now, um, I think I'm probably going to, sure, okay, put this on your sheet so that you know the difference between the both. And we'll probably just hit one more. 